Hey, Westside Dan Sutherland here. My privilege today to introduce our new teaching series. It's called Life Apps. It's based on the book of James, which is the wisdom book of the New Testament. James just gives practical everyday how to live the Christian life advice. And the idea in this series is that following Christ is not easy, but it is simple when you stick to the basics. You'll know the person that's starting us off today, Brian Phipps. Get ready for a home run. Enjoy Life Apps. Good morning, Westside. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome to all those who are joining us online. Happy 4th of July weekend. I hope you're uh, having a good time and a safe time, especially tomorrow. As Dan said, I'm Brian Phipps, one of the pastors here at Westside, and in the light of freedom, I want to talk to you just briefly about my conversion experience. I mean, when I was converted, it was out with the old and in with the new overnight change for me. My life before was just filled with errors, filled with failures. When I would try to get things going, things would start slowly and never really get out of this whole kind of a, a sludgy work environment. On top of that, I was always dealing with these things called viruses that would come my way and just impede the work that was being done. And then finally that dreaded blue screen came into my life until Max saved me. <laughs> mm -hmm. A Macintosh walked into my life and everything was new. Any Mac fans here? Just a couple maybe. Uh, how many of you are still doing Windows? Okay. God bless you. I hope life improves before too long. Love it. I, uh, I am a Mac fan, but obviously the, uh, Jesus has done a ton more work in my life than Mac has ever done. But the reason I bring that out is because Mac has introduced into the industry, and everyone else has followed along, you know, Android and all, this idea of apps or applications. I've got my phone here, and on my phone are several apps, and I use these regularly, some more than not. You guys have got me kind of zinged in here. One of the apps that I like to use a lot is uh, the Bible from uh, YouVersion. Read my daily readings there every day. It has made life so much more simple. It'll tell me what chapters to read that day so I can read through in a year. Another one on here that Jason asked me to point out, online folks, is the West Side app. Have our own app. Is that like awesome or what? I love it. But anyway, uh, a lot of apps that make life easier. I've got a Weather Channel app. I can see the Doppler radar at any time when those tornadoes came through. I watched that red cell head toward Worlds of Fun where my daughter was that day. I was able to call and say, get out of the way. Of course, they knew that they were doing it anyway. But, you know, they make life easy. And God has prescribed in his Bible many, many different apps. Many different applications, bite-sized wisdom that he gives us, B-Y-T-E, size wisdom that can lead to some God-sized change. Anybody need some wisdom today? Several of us do. I mean, several circumstances can happen. Something new can come into your life that you've never dealt with before. Even if you've been following Christ for a long time and you go, what do I do with this, right? I don't know. The Bible has an app for that. Some of you have been dealing a long time with a spiritual issue, emotional issue, fear, anxiety, depression, whatever it is. The Bible has an app for that. The Bible has wisdom for that. Some of you want to do more than just get by in your life. The Bible says, got an app for that. If you will, grab your note sheets here with me. Wave them to me. Let me know you got them. And at the top of the page there is a verse from Proverbs that I would like for you to read with me. Declare with me. If you don't have a, a sheet, it'll be up here on the screen as well. Let's read this together. The Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. God has applications for us in the scripture. Now, a lot of people know this, this verse here comes from the book of Proverbs. A lot of folks know, if you've been hanging around church for a while, that Proverbs is the wisdom book of the Old Testament. You may not know that the wisdom book of the New Testament, like Dan said just a minute ago, is James. We can find godly wisdom from there. This series will be five weeks long. Over the next four weeks in July, we'll demo four of these apps. We'll demo them for you. Today, however, what I want to do is kind of set the whole month up by sharing with you the operating system 
in which all of God's apps work. If you're a techno geek, uh, you understand what an OS is or an operating system. If we don't get this part right, the rest of the apps will not work. What is the operating system? It's the big idea for the series. Fill in these blanks, if you will. You ready? God offers the wisdom you need. That's a good thing. Nothing that we need is not provided for us. All we need to do is, just like any other app, is download it and use it. Download it and use it. That's the operating system. God provides the wisdom that we need, but we need to download it, just like on my phone there. I mean, if I wanted to read the Bible every day, if I don't download the app, there's no way I can use it. But my son is one who's, who just recently gave my old iPhone. He uses it as a touch. I uh, can't use it anymore. It was on uh, AT&T. He's got like 4 billion apps that he never uses. All right? Interesting thing there. If you, if you don't use it, there's no benefit. And God says download it and use it. One of the things I want to do today is something that we've not done before. There's some language here that some of you are familiar with. The seeker, believer, follower, leader. I wanted to kind of apply this series going forward to each one of those categories for a moment. A seeker is this. A seeker is someone who says, I'm not sure I trust the source of these downloads yet. I'm, I'm not certain I want to download them or use them. Here's the cool thing. We love that kind of searching to go on here at Westside. We value that. We love you if that's where you are. We don't sit and go, man, you got to get that right. Not at all. We love that. We value that. And we want to be honest with you about something. A lot of the apps that God provides, a lot of the wisdom God provides for us is counterintuitive to what you may have heard before. If that's where you are, you might look at some of the things that God says and go, that'll never work. My only question back to you would be like a Dr. Phil. How's what you've been doing working for you so far, you know? Try one of these. I would just encourage you to try one of these. Some of you are in that believer category, and that's that, like my son, downloads a bunch of apps but never uses them. You know what happens when you download a bunch of stuff that you never use? It clouds up the memory and kind of slows everything else down. And God says download it and use it. Here's what happens to folks who get to a series like this that's more of your plain truths of the Scripture. What they'll tend to do is, I've heard this before, heard that message when I was 12, and you do one of two things. You either check out and you start making your 4th of July plans or your lunch plans, or you think of somebody close to you in your life that really needs to hear this and start applying every point to them as you go down. And I would encourage you to not do that. It's download it, use it. There was a man named David in the Bible who God says was a, God, a guy after his heart. And here's what David would do, even as much as God used him in his life. He would always say this, God, search me. Search my heart. Reveal to me anything undone, essentially. Show me where I need to change so that I can walk in the paths that you've laid out for me. So I encourage you, if that's where you are, download it and use. Followers do this. They download and use the apps, but they haven't taken that next step of following Christ, which is sharing those apps with somebody else. Just this week, I was able to share the, the Bible app with somebody. And it's exciting to know that I have now turned someone on to something that can really help their life. I have personally found that the more I share what I've learned from God, the more joy I have. So I would encourage you, if you are a faithful downloader and user, share these apps with other people. Leaders, they download and use apps and lead others to use them. Check the one that you are. And then over the next four weeks, and, and then five weeks, including today, ask yourself that question that's in the next blank. During this series, I'm going to take the next step of faith in what way? How am I going to engage these life apps? If I'm a seeker, I'm going to try one. If I'm a believer, I'm going to stop downloading and start using. If I'm a follower, I'm going to start sharing. If I'm a leader, I'm going to start multiplying my influence. If that's the case, let's go forward from there. What is this operating system we're talking about? Let's start with download it. Download it. It's James chapter 1, verse 5. I'll read it for us. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. I love calling into businesses at times and getting the whole, you are number 347th in line, put the phone down, put it on speaker, and come back in an hour, and we might be ready for you. Do you like that? I don't like it very much. 
But with God, he's saying here, if any of you lacks wisdom, if you need anything, if you need to talk to someone, call, and I am happy to answer the phone immediately and to start engaging with you to give you what you need. The God of the universe has made himself readily accessible to anyone. He wants us to ask for this wisdom. That floors me that he's like that. I can't get through to some business, but I can get through the creator of all the universe. And I started to think, what are some reasons why we might not ask for the wisdom that we need? I'm just going to highlight two. And the first one is this. And there's no place in the notes to put it, but write, down, write it down somewhere. You disqualify yourself. You might be thinking, you know, I asked God for wisdom before, and he gave it to me, and I didn't use it. So I probably shouldn't ask him again because he would just look at me like, you dummy, why didn't you, you know, use it the first time? That's not the case. That's not our God. Look what he says there in the verse. He gives generously to all without finding what? Fault. There's no fault. He's not looking for fault at all. Or you might be thinking, I've got a past, man. You should see the skeletons in my closet. God would never be willing to talk to someone like me. He says he gives to all. He says he doesn't give just to a few who've gotten it mostly right. To all without finding fault. So ask. Look at this next verse, Romans 8. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? In other words, God's saying, if I gave you my son and I let him die for you, don't you think I would also give you the wisdom you need no matter what the background might be? God's not hung up. Don't be hung up about going is what he's saying. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything at all get in the way. Second reason that we might not ask God is that we just simply don't know how. So we don't let, you know, feeling disqualified get us out of the way. But then you kind of run up to that thing, well, Brian, how then do I ask God for wisdom? Got a similar answer that we had back in the, you know, you asked for it series, the one we just wrapped up. When we have a question, we go to the scripture, we go to praying, and then we go to asking another uh, individual in our life, a mentor type person. So I just want to walk through those uh, quickly and talk about what that looks like so that none of us leave here today really not knowing how to ask God for wisdom. Let's start with the Scripture. Um, some of you are very familiar with Scripture. You know the story from beginning to end. A lot of you, though, might not be familiar with this and don't know how to use the book. If that's the case, you're exactly where I was when I was 20 years old. For the first time, I was out on my own. I quit school halfway through my junior year. Just stupid, but went out all, you know, all on my own. And I remember the little apartment I was in, and then I was running up against just a, a depressed time in my life, and I didn't know what to do. So I was desperate enough to ask God for help. You might resonate with that a little bit. We get to that spot. And I remember going, I don't know how to use this book. As much as I was raised in the church, I don't know how to use this book. But God, I am going to trust you to point me in the right direction. I'm going to flip open this book, and I'm going to put my finger down, God, and I'm just going to trust that that's where you want me to go. And Judas went and hanged himself. <laughs> All right, that one didn't work, so God, I'm going to try this one more time. Make sure I get in the New Testament here real good. Go and do likewise. <laughs> Probably not the best way to do it. How do we go to the Scripture? First of all, let me recommend to you that if you go to the book that was on the coffee table for years, that might not be a translation you can easily understand. I have trouble in, in reading those at times. It doesn't mean that there's no value in them. It's just that I don't know how to understand them. If I don't understand God's Word, it's not going to help me gain the wisdom. I cut my teeth and memorized a lot of the New International Version. That was the best translation that was out in my time. The translation I've been using the last couple of years is the New Living Translation. Both of those, the NIV and the NLT, have study Bibles with them. And I consumed those things, just searching, searching, searching for wisdom. So the first thing to do is get a translation that you can easily understand. The second thing that I would do is um, just start reading, one, Proverbs. You know, read, read Proverbs in the Old Testament. Read James in the New Testament. Read the Gospel of John. 
in the New Testament. I mean, if, you, if you've got a smartphone, <laughs> download the, the app, the Bible app from uh, Life Church TV. Download it. It's got little reading plans in there that are, that are awesome. They've got one called the First Steps reading plan for folks that are just getting started reading the Bible. You can do that, and it's amazing how much wisdom you will accumulate from God as you do that over time. When I was 21 years old, a year after the last time, I started going to this church where there was one of the pastors that was just a genius kind of guy. His brain was filled with stuff. And I remember one time after church, being out there, I was about three or four feet away from him, and I pictured taking a fire wire. They didn't have fire wires back then, but something like that. Putting one end of it in his brain and the other end in mine and just say, I wish I could just download everything this guy knows. You feel that way sometimes? I just, I just wish I could take somebody else's learning process and dump it into my brain. And I told him about that. And he said, Brian, he said, it just starts one day at a time. Read God's Word. Write down what you learned from it. Write down what you're going to do because of what you learned. And then ask God for help in doing what you've just committed to do. It's that simple. You do that over time, God will change you. He will give you the wisdom you need. What about prayer? Prayer is just simply asking God for help. It doesn't have to be formulaic. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's just simply, God, please lead me to your answer. If it's a yes or no deal, God, just, just let me know, yes or no. One of the prayers that I often ask when I'm trying to make a decision is, God, slam the door and lock it on the way you don't want me to go and put me on a moving elevator <laughs> or escalator in the way you do want me to go. Put friends in my life that, that say things that I'll know is coming more from you than from, from them. And that kind of leads to that last one, a mentor. Lord, give me somebody. Go to somebody in your life that you, that you trust that will give you the wisdom that you need. There are five people on our grow team now, coaches, and we've got an extra coach that's even non-staff. If you email, here, here's, here's going to leave everybody uh, with something to do. If you lack wisdom and you need a mentor to talk to, just email it to grow at westsidefamilychurch.com. We will be there to help you. Would love to wake up tomorrow morning to 250 requests, you know, of what can I do to apply God's wisdom to my life. So don't let feeling disqualified keep you from downloading God's wisdom. And don't let not knowing how stop you either. It's right there for you. Now, here's the problem. And this is, a, this is an issue that's common to all of us. Tell me if you are, are this way. When, once you download the wisdom, you like to vote as to whether you're going to use it or not. Yeah? And you're like, God, give me wisdom. God, let me know what I'm supposed to do. And then he shows you, and you're like, whoa, I'm not sure I dig that. I'm not sure I can get my head around that. I'm not sure what to do. Listen to what God says about this. This is in that use it section. It's the next verse in James, verse 6. It says this, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Let me just pause for a second with that verse still there. Not doubt what? Two things. Not doubt that you'll receive it. When you ask for wisdom, you must believe that God will give it to you. That's what he's saying here. And the second thing is, you must not doubt the wisdom that he gives you. Wait a minute. I like to test things. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But that's what he says. You must not doubt that he'll give it to you, and you must not doubt what he gives to you. Why? Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That's not the best thing to have said about you. I mean, a wave is flimsy, a wave is weak, a wave is backboneless, spineless. It's nothing, it's just simply something that's tossed around by all the elements. It's something that you don't respect. It's something that people around you don't respect. And it's certainly not what God wants for you. He wants to be able to drive a stake in the ground to be an anchor for you to where you change the world around you, not having the world change you. And the application here is this. Commit to using the app before downloading it. Some of you just went, all right, Phipps, you had me until right there. That goes against my nature to ask God for wisdom and commit to using it beforehand. All right, listen to what God says in the very next two verses. 
if we download it and don't believe it, it says, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. This is a significant, significant challenge that God has for us. If you lack wisdom, which we all do, God is saying, ask and don't doubt. Trust that he'll give it to you and then trust in the wisdom that he does give to you. You're thinking of something already that you're asking for and you're wondering, can I do that? And some of you are pretty savvy. You're familiar with this whole apps process and you're going, but Phipps, there's an advantage with the apps. It's called ratings. When I go and I download an app, if that's you for whatever, uh, whatever uh, device you have, you'll realize that there's ratings on these apps, stars, one to five stars. And if you see that it only has like one or two stars and 25, you know, reviews, you, you're not, maybe not going to download it. But if you see one that's got four and a half to five stars, 25,000 reviews, and all of them are glaring, you can have some confidence before downloading that. You trust the source. You trust that it's going to be worth the money if you have to pay for it or whatnot. You know, God, you know, these have reviews. What about God? Here's what I think God would say to any of us who have that potential to doubt. He says, ladies and gentlemen, I've got 4,000 plus years of satisfied customers. Apps have only been out for three. And he says, the people that have actually downloaded and used the apps I've given them haven't just changed on the inside, but they became changers of the world around them. They influenced the world around them. They set the pace in art. They set the pace in academics. They set the pace in the world and, and got the, the DNA of God in the world around them. And we can do that too. Got a special treat for you this morning. You heard uh, earlier in a video about Pastor Ed from Thailand and the ministry that's been going on there. Pastor Ed is here from Thailand. Will you give me a Kansas City West Side welcome to Pastor Ed? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> It is an honor to have you here with us. We got to see the video. I'm sure you saw that earlier. And uh, we just have a question for you, Ed. And, and this is a very American question. Mm -hmm. We always want to know the secret of how things work. I mean, you know, Abba House has been a huge ministry that you and the Moors have been a part of. The prison ministry with mm -hmm. over 600, mm -hmm. 700 inmates now mm -hmm. giving their life to Christ and being changed. What's the secret <laughs> to your success? Uh, for me, it's uh, to serve God or to have a ministry with God. No secret. Just obey Him. Obey is for me. It means to do what God called you to do. You know, uh, I want to, uh, to give you uh, one example. Okay. It's uh, David. It's, uh, he went in the jail, Chiang Mai Man Prison, more than 20 years old, more than 20 years. You know, because he was a murderer, he killed more than one people. He has been just in the prison uh, 25 years old. That's mean all his life. But when he uh, accepted Christ in the prison several years ago, the Lord spoke to him. I have the way out for you. You don't need to stay in the jail for all of your race life. Hmm. But I want you to do something. He, uh, he said, what do you want me to do? Because David, he is the uh, Lahu people or mountain people. Uh, his first language is a Lahu language. The Lord spoke to him to have uh, study Thai language because the Lord spoke to him, when you went out, you will be a minister, a ministry with Thai people. Hmm that the Lord spoke to him. You know, he couldn't believe because, because his situation is very hard to get out from the prison, right? But he put everything that God spoke to him into practice. No hope, but he's still hoping in the Lord every day. He, 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 he does that every day. 
So he was out of prison. Yes, right now. He spent and he lived with us in the uh, uh, FCC, right? Uh, New Life House uh, in Chiang Mai for two years now. And then God asked him to go back in. Yes. And he obeyed. Yes. And then God's using him in great ways mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. Now, you've said that the, your strategy, your secret is just to ask God mm -hmm. and then do what he says. Mm -hmm. It's not more complicated than that. No. You know, it's... Uh, when, when, when we want to follow God, we need to put everything out, our own desire, everything. Sometimes we need to know God has a greater plan more than our plan. Hmm. That's all. It is an honor to have you here. Thank you for coming and sharing Thank your you. life. Thank you. So grateful for you and what God's doing. Thank you. Love it. Pastor Ed and, and uh, the Moors, we'll talk about them in just a minute, are going to be out in the hallway after the time is over so that you can go shake their hand and just uh, congratulate them and encourage them for the ministry that they have going on in Thailand. Don't we have a tendency to overcomplicate things a bit here? I mean, what I'm hoping lands in your heart this morning is that obedience to God's simple commands is more powerful than anything else you can do in your life. I mean, I am a very studied. I worked hard. I went and got my undergrad in Bible, and I went into seminary and studied the Bible because I wanted to be prepared. I wanted to be ready. I've studied leadership. I've done my very, very best to be the very best I can be. But God has this crazy principle in the scripture that says my strength is made perfect not in your spiritual gifts not in your strengths my strength is made perfect in your weakness that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life <laughs> I can't I mean I, obviously I'm, I'm saying that tongue in cheek but quite honestly I, when I get to heaven I want to ask Jesus why did you think that was so critical I mean why don't you make your strength perfect in my assets instead of my liabilities and I think it's because he wants to protect us from strategizing him out of our lives. Over 10 billion apps in the last three years have been downloaded so that people can have life a little bit easier. I'm just sitting here thinking, what if the 4 billion Christ followers downloaded an app a day from God. Just one. And followed in humble obedience just to that one. And we all got off the wagon of our own lives and got on the agenda of God and let him do in us what he wants to do. Wow, if he took Pastor Ed and changed 700 lives in a prison, what could he do with the billions around the world? It's not complicated, friends. It's not complicated. It's not easy, but it's simple. Four app killers on the back. Just want to run through these real quickly with you. Three things that you might say once you download God's wisdom, whether you're a seeker, believer, follower, leader, doesn't matter. If it's your issue, it's prevalent at the time. There's three things you might say. One, that won't work. A lot of the things that God encourages us to do are counterintuitive. That won't work. What you need to do at that point is pray for faith. Pray for faith. You don't trust the source at that point. You're saying that won't work. My definition of faith is, is obeying God even when it doesn't make sense. And there are many times where what God tells me to do don't seem to make sense on the front end. Another thing you might say is I'm not willing. I'm not willing. I trust God. I have faith. I'm just not willing. I will not forgive that person right now. God's just going to have to deal with it. Whoa. What you need to do there is pray for humility. Why? Because if you don't, you will be humiliated. I always tell my friends, if you get in an arm wrestling match with God, let him win. It hurts the harder you try. You might as well let him win early. God loves you enough that he will impose what he wants you to do on your life. If, you don't, if God's saying rest and you don't rest, you'll end up resting. 
Longer than you want and with less ability. I mean, the applications for this are phenomenal. Pray for humility to do what he wants you to do. Third one, I, and this one, oh, friends, this one we all are going to resonate with to some degree. I tried it before and it did not work, okay? I tried chastity. I tried forgiving that man. I tried that, 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 okay? And it didn't work. What do we do here? We pray for perseverance. And that comes off the lips easily, but it doesn't come out of my heart easily. There have been three seasons in my life where I was doing what God asked me to do, and honestly, I thought that God had checked himself out on vacation, and he didn't leave a forwarding address. And, and there were times where I literally punched the ceiling in my car because I was so distraught. God, this doesn't make sense. God, this really doesn't. I, brrr. you ever been there? I mean, seriously. You just, you just look up and you get to, God, this doesn't make sense. I'm doing what you told me to do and things have gotten worse. You pray for perseverance. It was during those seasons that the, that the verse, that the, that the idea, the quote has come out to me that makes a whole lot of sense. God has never been late, but he has seriously pushed it a few times. Okay? Hang on to that. Hang on to that. Because on my next season, I'm going to hang on to it. And friends, if you have any trouble at all, Dealing with that perseverance, two things for you, just real quick, we're done. Number one, this whole ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to you is in the context in James of uh, talking about suffering. If you're suffering, friends, which a lot of the people that James was writing to were doing, if you're suffering, consider it joy because that suffering leads to perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. It's a character building thing that you can take delight in. And that's where he says to ask for wisdom. Second thing is this, put your eyes on Jesus and let him be your encouragement. Listen to Jesus download for a second. This is what the father said to Jesus. Jesus, I want you to go down to earth and I want you to live without sin. I want you to overcome every temptation that comes your way. Sexual, anger, pride, arrogance, your agenda over God's agenda, name the sin. Don't succumb to a single one. I personally think that for 30-something years would be harder than the two days that he ended with. Because, and here's what happens. As we, as we obey and we get consistent with obedience, our tendency is to get prideful about that and to look at other people in a way that doesn't love and respect them for not doing the same thing that we do. But Jesus didn't even do that. In fact, he got to the place where he was to not only live perfectly, but he was to surrender completely, give up that life that you've just earned for the people that are making fun of you. Whoa, what a download that is. But he didn't just download it, he, he, he used it. And he's afforded us new life through him. Access to the Father once again. So that we can say the simple statement, just ask him. And he'll give it to you. Your download will never be as difficult as the one who has promised to walk with you in any and every situation. Seekers, there's your OS. You have four apps we're going to demo. Pick one. Go for it. Believers, put it into play. Don't just download it. Use it. Followers, share it with someone. Leaders, multiply your influence. The world needs God's wisdom. Let's provide it for them. And let's watch God change things. Watch him change. I would love to see this nation guided by God's wisdom. I would have so much hope. I believe you would have hope. It's possible. Let's go get them. Let's pray together. God, thank you for giving us your wisdom. Thank you for promising us all that we need to live according to your will. Jesus, we're grateful that your obedience and your love for your father was so great and your love for us was so great that you did obey perfectly then surrender completely. Help us to do the same. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.